Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about beam failures. Before moving to the discussion, I would like to request you all to follow our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, you may get the notification on new videos. Why beam fail? What are the beam failure methods? How beam fails? All those will be discussed today. Let's discuss first. Let's discuss about the type of beam failures. Mainly, beam failures can be categorized under these categories: bending failure, shear failure, torsion failure, corrosion of reinforcement. Failure due to corrosion of reinforcement. That's kind of a durability issue. Overloading, over reinforcement, under reinforcement. Let's discuss in detail about each type of failure method. Bending failure. This is a flexural failure of the beams. When the bending stress exceeds the bending capacity, the beam would fail. Now, when we, if we have designed the beam correctly, there will be warnings. Then we know the beam going to fail. Warning in the sense of cracks. You can see here. These kind of cracks will appear in the beam bottom. Uh, uh, bottom surface then it will be it will continue through the sides of the uh, concrete beam with that we can we know there there is issue so if there are a fractural issue if there are a cracking issue we have to be careful and we have to attend it very quickly because it could lead to failure of the beam so bending cracks is a serious issue how does this cracking occur? Let's see what the fundamental behind this. Now, uh, concrete cracks or concrete fail at the strain about 0 0.0035. Concrete fail at that strain. Steel inlet strain 0 0.002. So, steel yield before the concrete fail. So, if you correctly design it, now when the strain is reached 0 0.002, Reinforcement start yielding. That is elongating the reinforcement starts. When reinforcement start elongate, uh, the rain concrete strain has not reached because 0 0.0035. Concrete strain yielding start at 0 0.002. So the reinforcement yielding start, then the reinforcement elongate, then with that elongation, there may be a uh, deflections and then the cracks will appear in the concrete surface. That's good. That's kind of warning we expected. But if sections over design, if reinforcement not, are not yield, there may be an issue. This kind of a failure could happen suddenly. We'll discuss those things later. But if we have we if we talk about beam beam failure, the if the bending capacity exceed the uh, exceed by the bending force, bending moment exert by the loading will fail. Beam could fail. So we could use strengthening method. If you if you notice the cracks, we may use different kind of a strengthening method. Maybe support. Maybe fix the steel plates. Maybe put the I beam. Likewise, there are there are methods that we can rectify this. Let's see what's shear failure. Beam normally designed for the shear. So we provide the shear links. But if the load exceed or if we are not provide the reinforcement correctly, uh, then beam may fail in shear. So shear failure could be it's an inclined direction. These cracks will appear in the inclined direction. This direction you can see these are the cracks. So these are these we should distinguish distinguish, uh, distinguish these cracks from the uh, torsion cracks because torsion cracks also similar kind of pattern but uh, torsion crack will be con two two of the sections will be there so let's discuss when we, uh, we discuss about the torsion failures but we have to keep in mind we have to differentiate the torsion cracks and bending cracks very clearly so. These kind of failures could occur due to even due to construction error, design error, or construction defects. 
Likewise, there may be reasons for these kind of failures. Torsion failure. As I discussed uh, previously, also you can see the pattern of cracks in this failure. See, this is the pattern. It's continue, continue throughout the section. It is also a diagonal crack. Continue throughout the sections. How does torsion occur? Cause failure in the beam. Now, uh, in a beam, when it's subject to torsion, that's now for example, in a simple beam, have a cantilever. The slab is not continuing the other side, but we have a beam with the cantilever. So, when load applied to the cantilever slab, the beam will rotate. There will be rotation like this. So, this rotation gives the torsion. If we have not provided the adequate reinforcement, torsion and links to cater this bending moment, torsion moment, we will fail. So we have to provide the torsion links and the reinforcement as required by the design to avoid the failure. Uh, here what we want to say is, now the torsion link is not same as the shear link. Now shear link we bend at one edge, but torsion link we bend at two edges now here you can see we have the reinforcement here then we one end is one end of the links is here other end is here uh, in the in the in the normal link what we do is we bend at one inch like this so that's a difference so we have to provide the torsion link like this in this kind of situations there are torsions so if we have provided this one there could be a issue Corrosion of reinforcement. Reinforcement could corrode due to various reasons, and corrosion is a durability issue in the structure. So we can, uh, I mean, there are many reasons for the corrosion of reinforcement: carbonation of the concrete, chloride attack, sulfate attack, deterioration of concrete due to the various reasons, weathering and wearing, and many reasons could be there. So if if the reinforcement corroded by any kind of method, structural capacity will be reduced. Now, with the corrosion, reinforcement section could reduce. Then the bending capacity or the load carrying capacity will be reduced in the section. So, the, so we have to be careful in these kind of uh, situations because sometimes we might not notice, notice in the corrosion. If spalling occurs, we will see the corroded reinforcement. If spall is not there with the cracks, crack may be appear in the surface with the corrosion. So, with, if there are cracks in the or concrete, it's about spalling occur. Yeah, then we have to check those situations. Regular maintenance should be done in especially structures in the coastal areas uh, and uh, severe environment. Built in severe environment, we have to check if there are these kind of cracks or spallings occur in the reinforcement. In addition, there may be other reasons like uh, inadequate cover. Inadequate cover would lead to deteriorability issues. L low concrete grade in its aggressive environment, we have to use higher grade of the concrete to improve the durability of the structure. And during the design, we might not, one might not consider the exposure class. Obviously. If structure build for build in a sea environment or if, if the structure is in contact with the sea water, relevant durability factors should be considered. We have like cover to the reinforcement, concrete grade, water human ratio, cement content. Likewise, there are things to be considered during the design. Those you should have considered. If you haven't considered, there will be durability issues, then corrosion will corrosion will occur. So that it's we have to keep in mind with design structures. Overloading. Design could have done for certain load, but there may be chances in increasing the load in the structures due to certain event or un unexpected event. There are load factors considered for the design. However, even these load factors could increase. Loads could increase than the load given by the load factors also. In such a situations, there may be failures in the structures 
so this kind of a accidental event accidental events also could fail the structures over reinforcement what is over reinforcement why it is we need to discuss about it why it is a concern to us over reinforcement cause sudden failure of the structures earlier i discussed about the strains in the reinforcement and concrete concrete yield concrete crush at 0.0035 reinforcement yield at 0.002 so the yielding is start before reinforcement crush in that's a good sign then we have the warning but if it's the section is over reinforced over reinforcement in the sense we are providing the reinforcement more than required for the sections you due to a fear or due to the inexperience we provide so many reinforcement bars to the sections assuming it won't collapse it will be an issue at certain level now uh, when when the sections load increases now if we have so many reinforcement bars there reinforcement Though the reinforcement yield at 0.002 strain, due to the higher area of the reinforcement, reinforcement may not yield. If reinforcement may not yield at 0.002, and if even if the reinforcement won't yield at 0.0035, then such a situation, the concrete has reached its breaking strength or crushing strength. So if the reinforcement re- concrete section strain reach the 0.0035 concrete will fail this kind of failure is called brittle failure and it is a sudden failure because there are no warnings in the sections no cracks will appear because reinforcement are not yield no deflections no yielding no elongations so the concrete fail suddenly in this kind of situations therefore we have to be careful when designing the sections in such a situations the moment capacity evaluation should be done manually the equations given in the code may not be applicable in such a situation because that codes are based on certain values like every code have considerations now they consider the yielding point and the bending capacity based on the yielding and the concrete uh, concrete strains crushing strains but in such a this kind of situation if we have provided the reinforcement we have to manually calculate the neutral axis neutral axis depth and we have to see the moment capacity there since reinforcement are not g now let's see what's the under reinforced concrete under reinforced as name implies that we have providing the inadequate reinforcement to the section in such a situations now if we have a low area of the reinforcement now say we need three numbers of 20 bars we provide three numbers of 16 bars what happen as i previously explained now concrete and reinforcement have different uh, strength or yielding points now if less area of reinforcement to provide the reinforcement start yielding quickly because the its strain will increase now with the increase of the loading there will be cracks uh, in the rain concrete and it, it it will fail due to the inadequacy of the sections now warning will be there but if the section cannot carry the applied load section will fail that is due to the inadequate reinforcement of the section so there we have to, when designing section we have to be careful we have to provide the adequate reinforcement based on the load applied on the structure based on the bending moment shear force applied on the section we have to provide the reinforcement also we have to keep in mind now in, in such a situation if we want to capture the uh, bending capacity of section that also have to be done manually because now in most of the equations given in the board are based assuming based on the yield input or if the reinforcement yield this equation will be applied if reinforcement won't yield you have to manually calculate the bending capacity 
because strain is not due to the yielding point. Therefore, those things we have to keep in mind when designing a section. <coughs> those are the things we can we want to discuss today about the beam failures. We discussed today about how beam fails, what are the failure method, how it fails. So, so let's meet in another video. Thank you very much. I'm Prasad from Structure Guide.